This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi, Chef KD, and Lindsay Anderson. Paradise, Louisiana is brought to you by Circle K. Taking it easy, Louisiana State Parks. Follow your outside voice to our parks and historic sites. Farm Bureau Insurance, Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative, Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, Veterans Health Foundation, and by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Welcome back to Pure Bait and Tackle this week, right here in Segan Lane and KD. We got a, I had a busy week again, and so did you do. I, I made it in a, a annual, two or three time annual trip with Worcester Fish. This time it was the Bell Chase Academy, Danica and them, and all those captains. Most of those captains come from Phil Rover Show there in, in the feet. And I, what can I say about them captains? You know, we're doing a lot, all the sponsors, there's too many to mention. But this is something I enjoy. Though. Once you're in a boat with a kid and watch him catch fish, is unbelievable. News and tournament report. And I got, I got to tell you, you, you know, a couple things. Number one, you know, working over here at Superior Bait and Tackle, I don't know if I come out ahead or not because I come in here and it's like, oh, I need this. I, oh, missile bait, I got to have that. Oh, they got the right color. And Mark's got such a good inventory here, it's easy to just load the wagon. So you might have to fatten Does up my mirror so I can pull it. Does Claire that? watch you when you come out you come back to look for bags no no because i go by the shed before i get to the house well you also, also i've been i've been in your, <laughs> your shop i've seen baits i stop for baits and boxes with names on it some of them ain't even been out of the box well a lot of that my dad left me too but also gonna show y'all my angel coming back from a trip down in delacro i was rescued more of that to come y'all stay tuned Stay tuned for more Paradise, Louisiana, voted best of Louisiana outdoors three years in a row. There's no better way to cool down this summer than with a delicious thirst quenching Polar Pop Cup from Circle K. The Polar Pop Cup is the coolest way to beat the heat. Fill your Polar Pop Cup up with the flavors you crave and crushed or cubed ice. Nothing stays cold longer so you can stay refreshed all day long. Stop in Circle K today for an ice cold Polar Pop Cup. Polar Pop Cup, only at Circle K. Take it easy. Now is the time to join Benny's Unlimited Wash Club. New memberships start at just $9.99 a month. Wash, rinse, and repeat every day. Take advantage of this introductory offer at one of Benny's seven locations. Good morning, this is the uh, first Wish to Fish event for 2018. I'm here with Coach Alton Hurd from Bell Chase Academy. Coach, I don't know how you did it, but how do you get them to allow you to take kids on a field trip to go fishing? Well, after the past few years, uh, they saw the success of the program and what we're trying to do with these young men. You know, just trying to give back and teach them because they have all this fishery in this area and they don't know about it. A lot of the kids' parents are in the military, they move here and they're trying to find out about this area and it's a good thing for these kids to get out and have classroom outside outside the classroom. And I think it's a good thing and I thought they, they felt like they were going to so say, let's go with it. Well, that's good. I think today is going to be an awesome day. You know, usually we're worried about rain and right. wind and it looks cold like the weather. cold. <laughs> Absolutely. So hopefully we'll get out and catch some redfish and some specks and get those kids. And we have Rotolos actually donating lunch today. Yes, they are. So we'll bring back and they'll get them, get them a full belly before they go back to school. Captain Mike Helmer with Phil Robichaux Fish and Charters. Mike Kinnair, Phil Robichaux Guide Service. Captain Scott Poche, Crescent City Fish and Charters. I'm Lonnie Kinnair, volunteering for Wish to Fish. I'm fishing with my husband, Captain Mikey Kinnair. I'm a third grade science and social study teacher at Leo Kerner, and I'm excited to fish with the kids. I'm Bo Weber, and I'm fishing for Robichaux Fish and Charters, and I'm excited to fish with the kids today. Captain John Ladd, Robichaux Charters. Captain Lane Zimmer, Phil Robichaux Fishing Charters. The water's been up the last couple of days. We're probably gonna get back into marsh ponds today, see if we can find some redfish for the kids. We're just gonna work the banks. You know, whatever we can do, put some fish in the boat for them. Yeah, we're gonna fish it uh, in the ponds, throwing shrimp. I uh, don't know what the water looks like right now. It's been mixed, uh, dirty, clean. 
Hopefully, you can just find a few. What about the win? I hate it. <laughs> okay, folks. Tell me where we're going. What do you think? Probably back up by you, DuPont. Get in some small water and uh, hope to find some clean water. But uh, that's going to be the challenge with the wind and the water today. Good thing is the water's high. We can pretty much go anywhere we want. So try and stay close to the kids. Yeah, yeah, okay. Kind of the same thing like Bo said. The good thing, the water is high. You'll be able to go in the south end of the ponds and, and find some clear water in the pockets. You know, in the north end where the wind's blowing against it, it's going to be a little choppy and dirty. But uh, we should be able to, the good thing is the water is up. We can float wherever we want to. So we should be able to be all right with the uh, redfish in the ponds. Well, we're going to try to stay out the wind, play it safe, find some clean water, uh, probably some ponds or get behind some ridges there, get some water moving out some ditches. What you say, Cap? Same thing, way deep in, in the marsh and small water where you could sort of deal with the wind, get it at your back, throw some shrimp against some windy banks, and hope for the best. Hi, my name is Heather Pellegrin. I'm in charge of the Bully Prevention and Character Counts program at Bell Chase Academy. Hi, uh, Joe Beckris for the Bell Chase Academy, here for a Wish to Fish. All right, we're actually back in the marsh and we're trying to find, you can see as the water's come up pretty good, we're gonna try and find some bait fish. Uh, we got another captain over here. I'm gonna see if, if he's gonna take this area, which way we're gonna go. We're gonna throw some shrimp against the banks if we can. Pick dead some, shrimp, live no, shrimp? No, we're gonna throw dead shrimp. Under, uh, we got two different types of cork. We got a small little egg cork we're gonna throw, and then we got a rattling cork and see if either one of them really makes a difference. Flip it over. Okay, when it's in the water like that, when it's see, it, see how it's floating, I'm going to do a, a pop that will act it will attract the fish. About every 10 seconds or so, you just want to give it just a little pop. You see how it moves just a little bit? Yeah. Uh, when it disappears, when everything goes underwater, you're going to point at it and you're going to rear straight back. So, all right. First of all, the Bell Chase Academy is a uh, charter school and it's uniquely located on the Naval Air Station in Bell Chase. Uh, it was created in 2002 uh, to provide the military uh, folks a, an alternative to uh, our local schools. Uh, you know, the nature of schools in New Orleans have historically been challenged with uh, resources and everything. So uh, a lot of the military didn't uh, choose to come to New Orleans because of that. So uh, the opportunity of opening up the charter school, again, located on the base, convenient for uh, many of the people living on the military installations. And it serves uh, children uh, in Jefferson, Orleans, Blackmans, uh, parishes, and uh, so it's just not for military only, but that is the mission of the school, is to support the military dependents. That's another question. A lot of these kids are here just like Bill Jackson, right? he was written from Virginia. Yeah. Tell me about his parents. Well, his parents are both in the Navy. Uh, his dad is a command Master Chief and his mother is a Navy Chief. Uh, both of them, they're you know, senior in the Navy ranks. And uh, again, uh, the school supports all the military uh, units, uh, the Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, Air Force and Army, and Reserve as well as active duty uh, personnel. There you go. Ooh, that's a good fit. That's a good fit, Captain. <laughs> that's my man, but that thing, come on, boy. Look at the size of that fish! One more time. Run him to the net. You better let him get away. Hey, hey, hey. Let it go, partner. Go ahead, Carla. Where you stay? Look at me. Talk to him. Hey, <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that the first? That's your first redfish? Yeah, that's my first one. The captain casted the rod out, and about two minutes later, get a big fish bite, and this fish was tough. Go, man. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah, right. We got that. All right. All right.
That's a good one. Bring him on up. Whoa, oh, get him in the boat! <laughs> Bump with me. Nah, the spot on his tail is a false eye. So if a predator comes to catch this fish, instead of coming and getting him in the head, he'll come grab his tail and still take off and get away from him. You see how the tail's turning blue like this? When the fish are feeding, their colors get real bright and aggressive. Their tails will turn blue, blue, blue when they really feed hard. from Virginia. I do track and I did basketball with the Bell Chase Athletics. And um, we got, the boys team won the championship this year and the track team, it's our last meet on Thursday. What was y'all, uh, what age group? We are 13 through, well, I'm 13, but it's like 12, uh, 13. throwing dead bait against the uh, wind-driven shoreline, uh, hoping to pick up a few redfish. You can see the redfish patrol the grass. And we've been quite successful today. Uh, Mr. Jackson, he has caught a few fish. The Colonel's caught a few fish. So on days like today, it's market shrimp under a cork is going to be your best bet. If the wind lays down, uh, maybe some of your bays, uh, trout are starting to move in a little bit or actually move out of the winter. Habitats. Uh, we're throwing Cap Lane's Ghost Minutes uh, about 18 inches under a rattling cork and, and having decent success. Somebody comes up here and wants a smog report. They want to catch bass, they want to catch everything. What should they put in and what should they fit? Oh, anywhere in the Lafitte area, any one of the Lafitte marinas. If you're looking for bass, the Blue Point that we're catching a few earlier. Uh, in the grass, also up around Lake Salvador, up in that area, been holding a bunch of bass. Uh, redfish are scattered. We're actually in the marsh right now in Three Bayou Bay. And coming to April and May, in uh, Barataria Bay, we'll be chasing trout. fish in Virginia, what kind of fishing you did? I didn't really fish in Virginia, but I fished up in Minnesota a lot. Minnesota? Yeah, is that why you want to go play football in Wisconsin? Yes, sir. You ice fish or what? Um, during the summer, it's, it's the lake is not frozen, so it's, fish usually bite. They got like walleyes up there, they got bass, sunny. 
and then like when the lake freezes, we don't really go ice fishing. We, we just, if, if the lake's not frozen like in the early, early winter when it's not so, so cold, we'll go fishing. But then in the cabin up in Minnesota, they got northerners, they got the big rock bass. This is one time I want y'all to hear the wind. You hear that wind? Cap says 25 miles down the east. It probably got gusts about 35. You can see all the white caps, and we're in a, a closed in area, it's 105. You fishing that windy bank. With the tons that bait fish up in the bank. That's the main reason you, you can hire your captain. You call the captain and find out. If you ain't never been to a place you want to get fish, they, they got a network, they call each other, he's been on the phone, finding out what we're doing. Probably right now, we're probably the only people I know that are catching, consistent catching redfish. So, some of the other caps are fishing today too, so we'll see them when we get back to the land. We're here with the Colonel Beckowitz and Action Jackson. Give me a five, Action Jackson. Hold it up high. Let him man see you. There you go. Won't be long, we're going to eat Rotola's pizza. Oh, get him on. All right, that's it. That's all right. Hey, don't real, don't bother. You're going to break the tip. There you go. Jackson, what you did, boy? You okay, though? That's a baby. Go get bigger. Here, hold on, hold on. Listen to it. Oh, yeah, I'll die, dude. from the water. Is that the biggest fish you ever caught? Uh, no. What's your biggest you ever caught? A catfish. Catfish? All right. Luis Ortega from Bell Chase Academy. Let me tell you, that's a, is that the biggest fish you ever caught? Yes. Uh, let me see. I'm Rolando so Silva. I'm from Louisiana. Uh, I was born in California. Aiden Bogat. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors for this 2018 Lafitte event. We could not do this without them. We have Kaizik coolers. Um, we're gonna give all the captains a little thank you gift to take home from Kaizik. We have Faux Pas Prince, which has been with us since 2006. We also have Coca-Cola Baton Rouge. So all the kids will have water and Powerade and soft drinks. And Rotolo's is a new sponsor this year. We're gonna give all the kids um, some lunch and fill up their bellies before they go home. And then we also have, of course, Louisiana Fish Fry, um, also one of our big sponsors. And every chaperone and, and captain will go home with some fish fry product today. Thank you, Fish! Okay, Brett, safety and car insurance. Never scored a safety. That's defense. But go on, please. Uh, yeah, defensive. That, that's exactly how you should drive. Well, there's no such thing as a defensive drive. Offense makes the drive. Oh, I, I mean when you're on the road. But it doesn't matter, home or away. <sighs> OK, clearly I'm striking out here. Um... That's baseball. Get great auto rates from Farm Bureau Insurance. Call your agent today. Hey, we've been fishing together for years as you watch the show, but I got my captain's license. I'm ready to take you out to share the kind of experience that I grew up with my family having. Give me a holler, ChefKD.com. Don't tell nobody, but we gonna cook and eat pretty good on board. See you soon. Pause moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help. 
Trust us for local and long distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods, moving in storage, solved. Hey, welcome back. Anthony Buchwald, Mark Matthews, Superior Bait and Tackle. You know, we've been talking about the HB 391 and what it means for access in the waterways. And, uh, you know, here's a businessman, Superior Bait and Tackle, which we're out today. Thank you for letting us use your place. Gladly. Bottom line is, what do you see this mean to you? Well, you've got a, a public water going on to a, a private property. Um, you know, the public owns that resource. Anybody looking and watching, that's, that's your water. However, you need to be respectful of the landowner. Uh, it's, it's a very difficult situation in this state because we have so much access to so many waterways. However, you know, if, if a man wants to block off a canal, then he needs to block off the entire canal, including the water. And then we have a fair game. But if, as long as the public's water is going on to that private property, we all need access. And you know, you hear this argument, well, man, look, if, if I'm hunting this deer, and this deer's on my property, I shoot, he's my deer. If it's on your property, he's your deer. But that really doesn't hold weight. No, sir. I mean, it, the deer is crossing a private piece of property, which is very clear. Fish, on the other hand, are in the public's yeah. property, the water. You know. And look, we want a solution to this. You, look, we lose access to fishing. Let's start talking about financial ramifications here. Okay, so we start losing rights and kids and grandkids don't fish. And, you know, what does that do to your business? Well, you know, business, when you're in sales, it's a, it's a game of volume. So anytime you start taking players out of the game, it's, it's going to affect the bottom line for you know, sure. I'm looking at your shop, and if I draw the line here, yeah, that blue water stuff's going to do good, but that marsh stuff over there, not too good. And you take all of this side, Absolutely. you know, that, that could really affect it. You know, in the scheme of things, this bill is finally a chance for you to get involved. If people don't show up. That's it. You know, when this bill does go to committee on our tentative date, I mean, we need as many outdoorsmen, fishermen, hunters there that we can to get some support for it. So, hey, bottom line, www.joinlasc.com. That's correct. Find out about it. April 9th is our tentative That's committee our tentative date. date. We need a mass of people showing up, supporting this to at least get the ball moving. We don't know where it'll end up. It's got to get out of committee to do anything. That's right. Guys, we spend enough money in the outdoors. We need to let people know we care and we're concerned. So thank you all for tuning in. More to come. In Louisiana, our state parks are the perfect family destination. With nearly 180 miles of trails through park grounds and historic sites, you can endlessly explore nature, try some kayaking or world-class fishing, then find the perfect campsite or settle into a cozy cabin. Louisiana is calling, and she's using her outside voice. Plan your escape today at www.lastateparks.com. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Hey, welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. Time for the H&H &H Tournament and News Report. And guess what? We mentioned all about House Bill 391. It's coming up the 9th, which is Monday. Stay tuned. Get involved. Get your voice heard. There's another bill that you were telling me about, Gary. What's this about House 549? Bill 549, Representative Melinda White proposed it. Also, it was coming up in the, the committee. It's coming up. And uh, it, it's really something a little different. She wants to register houseboats. That way, if you got a derelict houseboat from now on, and you're thinking that funds will go to get rid of derelict houseboats and remove them from the water. You see after storms sometimes you see houseboats half sinking That's and right. done that. So it, it's, it's another thing that's gonna be coming up if you want, you're interested, you got a houseboat, and if you got a, 
you're around a marina where they got some derelict houseboats, this might be an interest to you. I think they could come up with a bill out for these families. You know, the derelict family members, you could kind of get some of them and put them to work. <laughs> you know, this is serious business. Hey, hey, I, come hey. up. <laughs> All right. You know, we got, we got a bunch of CCA stuff coming up April 11th. We got the CCA East Jefferson Banquet on April the 12th. Uh, we got a DU, the sponsor banquet is coming up. And uh, uh, Kel McKinnis, that'll be at the Pennington Biomedical Center on April 12th. We also got CCA Tripass Chapter Banquet at the Northeast Community Center in Eunice, Louisiana. Another one on April 12th. You know, you got to realize these are all over there. Most people ain't going to drive from Lake Charles or other places to go to a banquet, but this is your local banquet. This is the North Shore at Castine Center in Mandeville on Pelican Boulevard. That's another one on April 12th. Uh, something real big that we cover all the time with Louisiana Outdoor Writers, and it's been a big thing for years right now. The registration is open right now for Youth Hunter of the Year. You contact John Sturgis at the Wildlife and Fisheries. You go on their website. You can pull off an application. This is where they tell a story about their hunt, and they send a photo out photograph and then most of the people uh, they sit there and wait and uh, you'd be surprised the stories and uh, it's, it's unbelievable some of these kids gonna probably be outdoor writers so at the outdoors convention in Oct October I'm sorry in August right. this is when all this will be going on so get in touch and do that uh, you know we got turkey season started coming up all right also April 2nd shrimp season opened up and Louisiana waters and offshore, you go to the map, go to the website and look at it. Uh, they also, they, they close again, they close by buff and grassy wildlife management area and flooding. And that's up Grassy Lake in the Vols area. Right, the it's not the south. Down. Right, that's it. Now, it's not the one south. And uh, we want to congratulate week night, the early bird winner uh, is Brett. Matt Kibney out of Gonzales. He's the early bird winner. So if you want to sign up early, you, you get a right. big drawing for CCA. Sign up early. It's coming around the corner now. When more days coming around He's the close. corner, you never He's know. He's getting close. And you know, this is something that's a little different. Noah is seeking public comment on the Louisiana exempted fishing permit. Now, you got to read into that. That thing's a little complicated. This fishing permit, exempted fishing permit, it's going to give you a recreational fisherman, or if you're fishing with captains, uh, it's going to give you a little, maybe a few longer days to fish, maybe as many as 60 days. So you go to a wildlife and fisheries website or NOAA, and you, you'd be surprised. Now, what species specifically? Snapper. Snapper. Okay. Snapper. Okay. That, that's the one that I, being Pacific. Uh, I don't see if we got any more. Do you have anything? Uh, the only thing I got is a bunch of people talking fishing. Had a real good interview when, you know, we went, uh, the diversion project that they're talking about to do in the Lake Marlboro. Right. And uh, it really makes a lot of sense because there's not much that you could say there's a reason not to do it, to actually save that amazing swamp marsh out there, the cypress and the tupelo. But we were sitting there and uh, sitting there talking with John, and John was starting to talk about the algae bloom. And I didn't realize as cold as it was in December You talking about the crabber? Yes, sir. Okay. Man, look, y'all look check out some of the points that he makes about the algae bloom. We're sitting in on the meeting about diversion of the Mississippi River into Lake Marapo. John Hoover, commercial crabber, you just pointed out something I wasn't aware of. There's been an algae bloom in the lake since December. Correct. And that is something you got pictures on. What do you think is causing this? That's the big question because I've seen a many algae blooms because I've been doing this for over 30 years in the lake. I've never seen an algae bloom in the wintertime, coming off of one of the coldest winters that we've had on record. Well, guys, look, we're not sure where to go with this, but there's somebody watching that can probably put some input into this or some state agency that can maybe get involved in tests. But we need some answers because an algae bloom in the wintertime is not going to spell good results when we hit the summertime. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, worse. look, your livelihood depends on it. So right. anybody... Hey, Gary at Paradise, Louisiana, send us a little note if you know anything that we can work towards on this algae boom. Lake Verrett had one. It was in February. That's totally unusual. So right. just a little kind of FYI note. 
reaching out for help. Let us know something. Okay. Now, John, let me tell you something. I got some real important business to tend to, because mm -hmm. I got the OV for some ball crabs. And Gary's got a camp on Salt Bayer, so where, where's the best crabbing at right now? Best crabbing right now is probably uh, in the middle of Lake Pontchartrain. So you might have to get a bigger boat to get out there to get them, but they down there waiting. on these windy days. How yeah. big is your boat? 32. Oh, oh hello. Boat. Yeah, it's built specially for Lake Pontchartrain, so it'll get them. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, it might just be the kind of friend we need to eat good crabs, Gary. <laughs> well, every point that somebody brought up, there was an answer, and they gave a tremendous, all the people involved from the Louisiana Wildlife Foundation, Federation and to uh, CRP, a right. all those people there gave a, a presentation. It lasted about an hour. It, it was just tremendously. They asked a lot of questions. You asked a lot of good questions, and uh, this is on B-roll. But the interview you had with the crabber that fishes every day, and concerning the algae boom, and I really hear nobody really put down. They're concerned, they want to watch, but nobody put down on a conversion. No, they, they have themselves really thawed out the backwater and the winds and everything else. But, you know, y'all stay abreast of it. There's something coming up. The funds are allocated. They really can do it for, in today's economy, a reasonable amount. You get a lot of crests on the algae boom. They got it in Manshack, Marpaw, and there's algae bloom all over the lake right now. Some people call it toxic. I think the fish can get away from I ain't heard of any fish yeah. kills. You know, toxic means in my, my language that they, it just robs the oxygen. Algae's a plant. So, yeah. I think that covers news. You need news. to ask the experts on that. Yes, one. yes. Well, let's, let's, we've got some good Turnbull reports. you got some really interesting information over there on some of these. We do have the remember the old channel, whatever it was, bulletin, bulletin, bulletin. Well, guys, get the tournament, thing. high school qualification tournament, has been postponed until the 14th. Talked to Mr. Hoover and them this morning, and that is strictly because of high water. I'm glad you told me because I was getting ready to give you my upcoming tournament report. I was planning on being there, but I'm still going to go fishing in the southwest. And H&H &H Tournament and Rodeo Report, the Big Daddy, they're a little late doing it, but at Cocoa Marina the other day in Cocoa Dre, the March Madness results. The first place is Kaylin Johnson. You've been hearing his name a lot. At 12.76, second place was Jonathan Van over 12.3, third place with Greg Sanye with 11.34, fourth place with Randy Robichaud with 10.28. And look, the top bag was Jamie Bouillette, the cow cutter was Michael Como with 1.78 spec, nine spot red was Todd Webb, and the two spot red was Josh Reeves. Mm -hmm. Also, we got the Lars and Lunkers trip. They were out of Pearl River. Uh, they got another one coming up on the 25th, too. So it's going to be out of the Pearl River, but it's going to be in a different area. Uh, but you, you got to know that these guys fight to win, and the river is muddy. But you won't believe this. First place was 20 pounds, 20.15 pounds. And they also had the big winner also was in that total at 5.47 pounds. Leighton Page and Trevor Truax. Second place, 14 pounds, 4 Four eight was Joel Lee and Shane Pope. In third place was 10.2 pounds was Cody Osley and Barrett Brayson. Fourth place, 8.7 pounds, Rustin Bonnet and Christian Bonnet. Now, the next Lion Lunkers tournament, one more time, April 29th. If you want to get involved, it's going to be at Lock One Canal in Pearl River. For more information, you call Chad Hot Surrogate, 985-502. 3217. And that's the lies. And KD? Well, the old timers, the one been around for a while, 70 plus years at City Park Lake. Uh, we got to rattle some cages this year since the new presidents. Uh, first thing is the big bass, James Lehman, weighed in this big bass at 546, beautiful fish. Also in the junior division, Nicholas Foley. Nicholas had a 2.86 pound bass, won the junior division. But that isn't what made the news. We had our first all-gal team, and guess what? They, they won. won. So 
The Cabrini <laughs> Casters took home the back like of the one? bag. How do you like that? That's I a like Cabrini, that. Cabrini Caster. Cabrini Casters, All the huh? girls. They had 27 boats, huh? The 27 other teams they competed with. That's the 71st annual. Okay, 75. I said over 70. I didn't have to note 70. I believe that. But look, so if you want to know any more reports or anything about it, NewOrleansCityPark.com can get all the results and everything in there. Uh, what else do we have? We have anything else on tournaments? No, yeah, I just wanted to mention they gave a special award to Co. Florine. Uh, John Carter had won that when it was 3.8, 8.9 bass. Yeah. All right, Gary. Well, that's uh, about it on the city park. What about rodeos coming up? What you got? Rodeos coming up. Amy River Catfish Rodeo, April 20th. That's in that evening. You register to the 21st. The way in. Fred's on the river. Dreams come true in St. Jude. Big, big deal. Our friend Lyle's going to be the MC. Talking about Lyle Johnson from the Cincinnati Outdoors. He's going to be there. And Leeville got one on April the 20th. This is a joint deal for, sponsored by the Fruits Tourism for American Cancer Society. It's called Pins and Fins. Pins and Fins. Leeville Fishing Rodeo. And uh, this is a belated, I, I think I mentioned it, but my nephew, I saw him. I saw him Easter Sunday, and he didn't say nothing. He's so humble. But uh, he won that paddle palooza. They carried him in on a boat. He won. He won. He's always been in the money. When uh, we got Steve Lassard and all those guys winning, I was proud of him. And for some reason, they didn't send it on time, and I didn't give him en enough due. Here it is, Mark Eubanks. Congratulations. My nephew-in-law, I'm going to call him. Nephew-in-law. Congratulations. And that's it. Hey, we got back. a lot of fishing coming up. Guy is starting to warm up. Things are getting right. Y'all stay tuned. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana from Sophia Bait and Tackle. We'll be right back. There's no better way to cool down this summer than with a delicious thirst-quenching Polar Pop Cup from Circle K. The Polar Pop Cup is the coolest way to beat the heat. Fill your Polar Pop Cup up with the flavors you crave and crushed or cubed ice. Nothing stays cold longer, so you can stay refreshed all day long. Stop in Circle K today for an ice-cold Polar Pop Cup. Polar Pop Cup, only at Circle K. Take it easy. Now is the time to join Benny's Unlimited Wash Club. New memberships start at just $9.99 a month. Wash, rinse, and repeat every day. Take advantage of this introductory offer at one of Benny's seven locations. Well, it's a start to the morning. Not the biggest one in the world, but top water bites, don't matter what size, shape, species it is, they're all fun. Let's get this little guy off, try to get some bigger fish here. Oh. Well, that was a clumsy fish right there. We do a lot of times when you have one that's missing the top order. I like to keep a popping cork right by me and follow it up with that. That looked like about a 15 inch trout or so. See if we can get him to hit this cork. It's always good to have one person throwing a cork and the other one, if they're the other anglers using a top water, and see which one they're gonna feed on better. Top water's a lot of fun, but you miss a lot of fish on them. If I can't get one on the core, go switch right back to the top water. The good thing about the top water is you can cover so much water with it. Long cast, you can fish fast, and you, it's a really great bait to locate fish, and it's a really good bait to catch big trout too. That was crazy. I, that fish hit the top water about four times and just kept missing it and missing it and missing it. Didn't get him on that cork. So let's get back to the top water. Let's see if we can get him on that. And when you're throwing the top water, make really long cast. And you're just going to put that rod tip down. And it's just twitch with the rod tip while you're slowly reeling in. And what it's doing, as you look at the lure out here, 
It's just working a zigzag motion. It's going to Z. Left, right, left, right, making Zs all the way back to the boat. You can pause it, start it up again, pause it, start it up again, try different cadences, see which one's working each particular day. And what this method's called, it's called walking the dog. It's a common terminology in the fishing world for making your lure zigzag back and forth. Today we're starting off the morning using the Bayou Bengal matrix mullet and we're throwing it as far as we can and I'm trying to figure out just which lure they're wanting, the top water or the popping cord. already this morning but they're they're being clumsy that's pretty typical with topwater fishing you'll get days where your connection ratio is like 75 percent and you'll get days where it's 25 percent right now today started off in a 25 percent dial fish unbuttoned it in the well here what you want to do when you're topwater fishing is you, you need to figure out which, how far off the bank the fish are each morning. That's really important, probably the most important thing. And what we do is it's, it's called fan casting, where you're gonna make 360 degree casts around the boat. So you might start off throwing closer to the bank and then make sure you make some casts throwing way out off the shore. And those fish are gonna tell you which water column they're sitting in. They might be up tight in two foot of water. They might be up far, four or five foot of water. You know, this shoreline we're fishing right here is real pretty grassy on the bank. So it just depends on what estuary you're fishing, what the vegetation's like. If the grass comes way off the bank, you're gonna wanna fish much further off. If the grass only comes off a few feet on the bank, you can get away with throwing it a little bit tighter. The key to this is the vegetation underneath the water, the stuff you can't see. How much grass is underneath? You know, if they had grass, like a coontail or a beautiful eel grass or something all the way out in the middle of the lake, around no kind of shorelines or any kind of shoreline, well, you could fish it dead in the middle of the lake. It's not always the shorelines you need to be focused on. It's what's underneath the water. Good one. Oh, trusty popping cord. Now this morning we started out with decent action, but a lot of missed fish. Fish kept missing the top water. Now we got the sun coming up on us. So what I like to do a lot of times when I'm fishing this shallow, grassy marsh style, this is like the same way a lot of people fish bays and small lakes. You fan casting in the middle and once that sun comes up I just like to pop that cork. Usually that top water bite only lasts about eight or nine in the morning. Now, if you get real cloudy conditions you can throw it all day but today the clouds peeled out on us pretty early so now we're throwing the popping cork. Popping corks coming through here for us. popping cork on a little bit earlier like I was saying but you know you want to you always want to have a popping cork tied on when you're fishing these top waters and fishing shallow water nice beautiful trout I'll show you the cork that we make here at Matrix Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. Aggressive, modern, 
and durable. The latest advancement in spinning has the Revo name on it, and almost a century of fishing expertise in it. No matter where your passion takes you, world-class fishing is only a Revo away. Hey, we've been fishing together for years as you watch the show, but I got my captain's license. I'm ready to take you out to share the kind of experience that I grew up with my family having. Give me a holler, ChefKD.com. Don't tell nobody, but we gonna cook and eat pretty good on board. See you soon. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana, and Berkeley, I will go see a fishing report. KD, this is a long one, but I'm going to try to make it quick as we can. But it's unbelievable with and all the high good. water. Fishing's good. Good fishing reports are good high news. High water, wind. Still, Louisiana, we blessed. God bless us. I'm telling you, we still catching fish. Got to pick your day sometime. But even on a windy day, if you don't want to stay in, you can find where you get out to wind or where it's roughing up a bank because that's what we did. The coastal, you saw that wish to fish. That wind was blowing, just unstopped, rolling up against the bank. They were putting that cork with that dead shrimp up against there, and them kids were hammering those redfish. So, and uh, I, I know what you got in coastal waters right now. Well, coastal wise, I talked to Ryan Lambert. He mentioned that when you come at full moon, right, which was you know, about four or five days ago, the shrimp will be moving, the trout will be moving. They're doing really good, starting to catch some really good limits of uh, trout. You know, redfish is still everybody's game, but everybody's enjoying doing it. You know, the one thing that I've heard is Delores, the trout, really turned on last week. I don't have any pictures. Guys, y'all want to get send us a picture, turn the camera horizontal, put the light in their face, send us a picture of some of that fish. But they had limits of some really pretty trout. Herc had some amazing, check a couple of the fish him and his little lady caught, caught some beautiful trout while they were down there. But I don't have near the salt roll reports you got, but I got a cute story. As you can see right here, I had a little trip this week, first trip for the twins, Branley and Caden. And let me tell you something, they did good, fishing was tough, but right, I'm not gonna tell you which one, that way they can just keep an enemy about it. But he went to cast, see I got it, Mr. KD. So he went to cast and he took it and he, Chucked that live shrimp out, and he just kept going. And, buddy, he hit that water, and the first thing he did when he popped up, he says, don't let the redfish eat me. <laughs> Forgot about the alligator. Forgot. They had a 10-foot alligator down the bank. But, you know, great trip. They had bass. We had specks. We had red. We didn't limit out on anything. We had a great day. Built a great family experience. And let me tell you something. When I brought that grill out and grilled them up some stuff on the boat, they didn't go away hungry. Yeah, anybody's going to like that when you get you go on a trip with KD. Look, Captain Jody Dunwire, he took off during hunting season. He had a little surgery. He's starting to get back in fishing. That high wind messed him up a lot, but he's going to find fish somewhere out of Empire. Jody did that. He sent us some pictures. They were catching those redfish, the same thing, fishing them banks, them windy banks. He was using, using live and fresh shrimp. He said, but ain't no use trying live shrimp right now. If you're going to drown them, you're going to put them on there. Uh, whenever that live bait starts coming in, you can't beat it. And you, you can use the dead ones when they die, or you can put them up and take them home and eat them. Tofield uh, was over there. He had a plane trip that Wednesday. Same Wednesday, we were going out and all the wind. I just didn't think how he was going to do it. He had Mac and Joe, his guests from Dallas, Texas, the old couple, and they was, uh, it was just unbelievable how, you know, well, all that wind blowing us didn't affect them. They made their trip, caught 48 specks, almost two shy of the limit. Tofield said he didn't get to fish much because the guy had a little, you know, a little deadness in that water. He got used to it, the older gentleman. But uh, when he started catching those fish, he, he got better quick. And uh, they're catching those fish over there on the islands. The plane trips are still going on. Still, somebody got explained to me why well, it actually blew us off the water. He was out there at Brenton Island, and they, and they were fishing. Talk yeah, to him. I can't well, I don't know. It. Then, uh, then also last week, uh, Harriet Mouton. I don't know if you know who that is. Her daddy is, was to be the wildlife and fisheries. He, she was fishing with her boyfriend. She's stationed right now in South Carolina. Her captain, boyfriend, his name Steve Forbes, the captain, 
and they catching redfish again in South Carolina. Uh, Ponce's train, the trussles. Everybody was talking about it. My friends, Hal and Ken Lambert, they go to South in the trussles. They were trolling with a tiger. You know what a tiger is? It's got to be purple and, and so true. Pro, which, who, who's tiger? They it, all got no, a tiger. They, they got a tiger. This is a matrix shed matrix tiger chair from Chaz using a big jig, a half ounce jig, and trolling. And this is a picture of just a box shot. I usually don't show them, but it shows you the nice size these fish are. Uh, and Hackberry, I finally got a report from Southwest. I was supposed to be making a trip. I was going to make a trip after the bass. High school bass tournament said I was going to make it Sunday morning over there. I'm still going to go, I guess. But uh, I'm going to be fishing with uh, the captain, Matt Griffin. Trout mouth charters. And he got about four or five of the lodges over there. He sent a bunch of pitches right now. They're still catching them, but they're still fighting to win. But they, not just in Big Lake, you know, and around Hackberry, but in Sabine Lake. Well, you know, uh, salt water is getting to be that time of year. You know, the bass and all is fun, but still got a lot of good bass. Matt and I, the girls wanted to take a nap Easter Sunday. So I don't do naps, not in the daytime. So Matt and I hooked it up, ran down to Bob Black, put in, went in the marsh. Here's a few of the little pictures of some of the fish we caught. We had some beautiful fish, and wind started blowing, and they got on top water. And, you know, man, I had occasion to say the I The wind was blowing, and you were catching them on top water. Oh, yeah. Uncle Lou, are you, are you what? What you fishing with? Ribbit. <clears throat> well, forget that frog. Ribbit. You know, that's what all them fish were caught on over there in Signet right now. So You know, I talked to Stuart. They were fishing, you know, on the North Shore and all around. He grew up over there, and they caught, really, they caught 30-something bass Saturday in some really not good conditions. Well, that's my freshwater report right now. You ready? You go for it. Freshwater. Bo Hastings. Frog on a frog. He was fishing around Manshack. Catch them on a frog. He caught a frog on a frog. You know, you know what April and May, they shut the frog season down. You That's know it. why? So they can mate and have their babies. Family frog, that mate. I believe he was, I don't know if he was trying to eat that frog or mate that frog. Oh, so I here, here's a picture of it. Now, Caddo Lake up north, Dennis Curry, 9.12, big fish. He's fishing over there. He's fishing a watermelon red Cinco, a wacky rig and about five foot of water. Jack Millers, Gene Andre, is scouting for that tournament coming up this weekend. I didn't tell you about these tournaments, but they got another tournament coming up this coming weekend that'll be out of Jack Millers. So when these people are talking Jack Millers, they can fish in the intercoastal. It's not really a spillway, if you understand that. It's like the Lake Barret side, Bell River side. The water's high, but the it's Pats not. Pat's Bay, I mean, there's some great reports coming out of Pat's Bay. Uh, Bay Natchez, Pat's Bay, Millers Lake, I fished it years. Upper flats, whew, we used to catch that duck seed in top water and they'd get around in trees. It was just unbelievable with a double horse. So uh, another Toledo Bend, great reports coming. I got a bunch of them from Toledo Bend. Justin and his daughter, Kelsey Acord, Emma Amato, that's the daughter, uh, granddaughter of Wayne Amato, big, big sack of lay. Lake of Kissel, Michael Crapp and Donna, Bobby Gall and Jed, they, I don't know if these are white crab or black crab, but they sure look black. And they, Lake Kukissa, I have never fished Lake Kukissa. My, my grandson, my sons, a lot of them will go fish bass and sackalay, but I have never fished them. Bayou Signet, Catawache. They, they were talking about fishing in the Catawache and back in these tank farms in there. They got that grass again, because these guys were catching them on a Cinco. Uh, they had the top stringer, they had a bunch of fish. I was talking about Kim and Tommy Abbott that belonged to that Central Club, so they were there the week before and they went back because they knew them big fish were coming out of there. Some of them, the, the top five fish weighed over 17 pounds. So that's, that's awesome for this That's time it, here. and then uh, back to Toledo Bend country, I got the thing came in. Uh, a friend of mine sent uh, a, a, his daughter, Courtney Klein, she also had a roommate from Arizona. They called her Momo. She didn't give me her last name, but uh, they both caught their, well, the little girl from Arizona caught her first bath to the leader, Ben. And uh, I, I don't know what else to tell you, but the Lunker are going crazy again. There's more and more 9, 10 
them found fish that comes well, off you know, of that, that also the comes with people learning how to fish them because a lot of these bigger fish are coming from deeper water. We're not deep water fish, but you get around Toledo, you want to catch big fish, you learn how to fish deeper. You know, there's a lot going on. Uh, we talk about a lot of things. Springtime's coming. Go drown a few crickets. Have yourself a good time with the kids. But we'll close out. They have this coming on the 10th, April 10th, New Orleans Lakefront Arena. They got a big tribute from the American Culinary Federation of New Orleans, ACF of New Orleans, to Frank Davis, who is just, you know, part of leaving a legend that you won't ever replace. We did a special on him, like you said. But what's the thing about it? It's going to be a lot of seafood cooks over there. And it's going to be some of the best chefs that have been honored by their just things that they've done. By their accomplishments, you get to taste a lot of what they're going to do and prepare, kind of show off a little bit. Tickets are available. They're $100 a piece. Go online, acfno.org, get your tickets. And, guys, you will not be disappointed because let me tell you something. You talk about good food, you talk about Louisiana, it's just in the same breath. That's my seafood. We always talking about catching. Let's talk about cooking. That's right? it, buddy. That's why I got KD here. Hey. We'll see you all next week. Stay tuned. More like Paradise, Louisiana is brought to you by Circle K. Taking it easy, Louisiana State Parks. Follow your outside voice to our parks and historic sites. Farm Bureau Insurance. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. Veterans Health Foundation. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. <laughs>